All right, everyone, we are back and we are going to start our discussion first with kind of a tidbit about alloys. So an alloy is basically when we mix um, basically two or more components um, and typically it's metals when you refer to alloys. So the major com component is going to be our solvent, minor solute, just like we kind of uh, looked at in chemistry. Typically, when you're developing alloys, you want the atomic radii difference to be about plus or minus 15% so that those crystals are commensurate. Uh, additionally, it's helpful if it has the same crystal structure. Um, and typically, we can only alloy up to um, about 10% is about the maximum you can do. Now, this has kind of been thrown on its head with um, the introduction of high entropy alloys, which combine about 20 different metals um, with completely different and ranging um, atomic radii. So um, just a caveat there. Now, we are going to get into a very important part of our course, which is talking still about point defects, zero D defects, but now looking at ionic crystals. Because when I have ionic crystals like NaCl, NaCl, uh, oops, let me get, let's do Cl, Na, Cl, Na, let's do NaCl, NaCl. This is plus, this is minus, this is plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus plus minus plus minus um when we ha when we have an ionic crystal like nacl we need to have a zero charge so number of na's must be equal to N uh, cl however and we know anions gain cations lose so this is our cation this is our anion when we have a vacancy um something interesting happens um so for example, if I have a cation vacancy, let's say I erase this Na. Now if I count up my charges, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, I am now a net negative charge. So if I create a cation vacancy, my crystal is now net negative. If I create a, an anion vacancy, it'll be net positive. So to describe essentially, to describe these defects, we're gonna use this notation called kroger vink notation. And it's represented as so, and actually, we're going to start to change colors here. So I'm going to say, my color here, we are going to have our X. That is our script. So that is what is on the site right now. So X can be basically like an atom, like Na. It can be a vacancy as well. V is going to be our vacancy notation. Um, well, let's go to our, let's put our blue here. My Y is my subscript. So that should be what should the site be there. So that can be a an atom that's on the site. So it could be Na, it could be Cl. Um, we also know it could also be an interstitial site as well. We don't know what site a vacancy is. So it can never be like a vacancy in that subscript because we don't know where the vacancies are going to be. So it could only be an atom or an interstitial. And then finally, in our red... This is RZ. RZ, if the difference between X, if we're going from Y, so if we're doing Y to X, if that change is, results in zero change in charge, we are going to represent that as just an X. If going from Y to X is gonna be positive, we will indicate uh, that as a dot. Oops, uh-oh. I need to connect once again. Sorry about this, people. But the pen is sensitive. Needs to connect and reconnect. There you go. Got our charge. So we can go ahead and say that this is here. And if going from Y to X is negative, then we do a little dash, a prime like that. So let's keep this in mind as we kind of move throughout this. Um, but let's go ahead and let's start to work some of these out. So when we have defects that are intrinsic to our crystal, meaning there's only defects within our crystal, we're not adding anything extrinsically yet, there are two predominant types, Schottky and Frankel defect. A Schottky defect is this charge compensating anion cation vacancy. So if I look at Na or KCL, no. Now let's go ahead again. Let's start. So we're creating a charge compensating anion and cation vacancy. So I'm going to have vacancies 
are what is there right now. What should be at my subscript, I'm putting a vacancy where a K should be. I'm also putting a vacancy where a CL should be. Now, for my charge, K is what? It's my cation, it's one plus. When I go from one plus to zero, that's a minus, right? And that's the same thing that we kind of talked about previously. When I create a cation vacancy, I'm creating a net negative in my crystal. CL is negative and goes to zero, so to do that, that's a plus. So, this is how we, we write out our Schottky defects. And you can kind of see the same thing here with the TiO2. Um, and actually, you can kind of see here. The only distinction there is that we're going to have vacancy of oxygen, and then you have to put the subscript, the script in front multiplies everything. So one of the key things here is I need to make sure I have charge balance. So there's no charge here, so minus one plus one is zero. If we look here, no charge here. So titanium, that's a four plus cation, so it's gonna be a minus, so four plus to zero, minus four. Oxygen vacancy, oxygen is two, minus two, always minus two. Um, and so from going from oxygen two minus to here, that's gonna be the plus, so boom, boom. And then it's multiplied here. So minus four, plus four, and we ha also have uh, mass balance as well. Now, a Frankel defect will be formed. Basically, um, we, we move one of our anion or cation into an interstitial site and we form a corresponding vacancy. So if I have, for example, in, and we can show this here, so I have, Li goes to, um, so I am taking my lithium, I'm putting it on an interstitial site, and then I'm leaving behind a vacancy. Let me put this here. So this is lithium. And then let's go ahead and put the subscripts. So lithium. So lithium is now on what should be an interstitial site, a little I here. And I've left a vacancy where lithium should be. And now I can do, so this is a, cation Frankel defect. So lithium plus one to lithium plus one, there's no change here. Interstitial, initially no charge, put lithium on it, that's a plus one. And lithium here, plus one to zero, minus. So we have, if we look across the script, we have zero and negative one plus one, that's which is zero. I, we also have mass balance. So if I go across the scripts, the black, I have lithium, lithium, and vacancy doesn't count towards anything. So that's still consistent. And on the subscripts, lithium, interstitial, no mass. So as you go throughout these equations, you want to make sure that you have charge balance and mass balance. Excellent. And you could have reactions that form here too. Now, next time we are going to get into extrinsic reactions in Kroger-Vink notation. See you all then. Thanks. Bye.